The contrast with Mitch McConnell could not be starker. For that newspaper. After the 60-day period was up, the publisher of the paper sent a report to my supervisor at Naval Ordnance Station. In it, she says, Tom has a natural talent for writing. Tom can turn government bureaucrat ease into readable prose. Tom also has an excellent command of grammar and is careful about fine points of punctuation and style. These skills would be an asset in any job that requires communication with audiences ranging from high-level supervisors to co-workers and the public. Then she ends by saying, within a very short time, Tom showed such promise that if I had an opening for a reporter, I would hire him without hesitation. Tom's potential as a professional journalist already exceeds that of many people with more impressive editorial resumes. Oh, wow. <laughs> then, while I was there, the, the, the editorial, I mean the uh, cartoonist on staff did this for me. You might see a few presidents there you recognize, but the caption says, Mr. Rectumald goes to Washington. I love that one. I'm also very proud to be a 35-year member of the International Association of Machinists and Aerospace Workers. Very proud to have an honorable discharge from the U.S. Navy. And I'm also proud to be a Senate candidate who is not accepting any campaign donation. Energy, Allison is into, buying, uh, into the idea that siding with coal companies is good and against the workers and against the community. I strongly oppose President Obama's attack on Kentucky's energy industry. There is no war on coal. Kentucky does not want to get rid of the coal or hurt the workers. What he wants is for coal companies not to be polluting all over the goddamn place and for whenever a mine shaft you know, crushes, for there have been regulations that could have prevented that. Um, so he's there for, to protect the workers and to protect the environment. That's what the EPA is there Therefore, the coal industry in Kentucky is not going down because of the overregulation. It's going down because it's just a dying industry. The coal is deeper into the ground. You have to reach out farther. It's, it's not profitable um, for a lot of coal companies to be able to dig so deep into the ground and to transport such a long way. If we nationalized coal, if we nationalized it, then we would have free electricity. We would be, you know, we would have the standards that Gaddafi had. He had free electricity along with free health care, free education. You would actually get $50,000 if you were a newlywed. So you just got married, you're on your way, here's $50,000 from the government. Um, we're a coal state. Our, the way our electric rates, and it's just way too high. It's ridiculous. We could have nationalized coal. We could have owned the coal. That's a trillion dollar asset sitting in our hills. And with our ownership of that coal, then we could have done so much with it. So you want to talk about war on coal? Working class people don't have control of that coal. It's not the state. The state doesn't have it. The people don't have it. No person has it. Some rich fucking tycoon that is sitting there giving, you know, um, Mitch McConnell all his goddamn money, and Allison's got a couple of trust fund people, you know, donation, uh, people that are giving her some donations. So, that's bullshit that she's going along with Mitch McConnell's, oh, war on coal, war on coal, she should offer a stark contrast with him on that. Coal miners die because of lack of regu regulations. The coal severance tax keeps on getting hijacked by Frankfurt. So if the people hate, you know, these taxes and the war on coal and shit, why do they fight over the taxes? They're able to get the, the coal companies to pay some sort of severance tax every year to be able to take all their fucking wealth. And Frankfurt always takes that check away from Eastern Kentucky counties for, you know, because they want the money, right? That's all they give a shit. If the government owned it, they would be union jobs, good union jobs. And government could use the, the tax taxes and the profits to prop up the community to help with our electricity rates, with energy um, uses here in the state. Uh, we can invest in other job creating ventures. So to replace coal uh, jobs, <coughs> to replace the jobs that coal is losing. Our nation's energy approach should rely heavily on coal, oil, and natural gas. This is Allison Lundergan Grimes. She says we should just focus on all these dirty fucking, you know, um, oil, coal, natural gas. She does point out that there has uh, natural gas has not been developed. In 2011, Kentucky contributed 7% of the nation's total coal exports, but we could do more to develop these and other resources to reduce our trade. So she is saying we need to, you know, get it, our natural gas. We need to develop our natural gas and... Um, 
So dig more, get some more energy companies in here, right? She doesn't mention solar power. She doesn't mention uh, wind power, ethanol. Even George Bush mentioned switchblade grass, right? So the fact that she doesn't mention any viable alternative energy, solar power, that's unlimited energy. Solar power is unlimited. I mean, it never stops, right? So there's... Um, um, you know, there's some problems there because she seems to just be loving, you know, oil and the traditional forms. And that's how we do it. Fossil fuels, we have, you know, ground up dinosaurs and plant matter from millions of years ago. That's what we're using to fuel our vehicles right now. Uh, but how come, you know, why couldn't we crush carbon and do the same thing? I don't know. So, instead of strengthening and preserving critical programs, Ms. McConnell plans to end Medicare as we know it under a proposal black backed by Mitch McConnell, insurance company bureaucrats would be put in charge of making seniors health care decisions and seniors would see their out-of-pocket cost increase by nearly $6,000 per year. Thousands of current seniors across Kentucky would be forced back into the prescription drug donut hole, costing them approximately $13,000 more between 214, 2014 and 2022 than under the current law. I believe we got to balance the budget, but we got to do it in the right way, which means protecting benefits and programs seniors have paid into over a lifetime of hard work. As a senator, my number one priority will be putting Kentuckians back to work in good paying jobs. Kentuckians lost more than 118,000 jobs at the worst part of the recession. They're still struggling to provide for their families. Ms. McConnell failed to put Kentuckians back to work. To increase family incomes, I'll work to ensure all, ensure all Kentuckians, Americans can earn a living wage for their work. Make sure women get equal pay for the same work as men. And hopefully that's equal, right? I hope that men get the same pay as women, black get the same uh, pay as white. Let's just, the same work is for everybody, not not just women, but also for men and for people of color, right? So it's not all about, um, it, be a strong woman, be a proud woman, fight for these women issues, that you are right, that the Republicans want to control your body and your reproductive system. Um, but there is not a, there's not a war on women, okay? There's no war on women. Um, the, um, these are, I mean, the, the, the war on, the war on, well, whatever. The war on women is about the reproductive systems, but you have Rand Paul who points out, well, what about the, the, uh, the Bill Clintons of the world that prey on their, um, you know, that uses their authority to be able to get what they want from their staff. Well, you know, people in power, whatever. Okay, I'm not talking about this. Um, we must cut red tape and allow businesses to grow and create new jobs. As Secretary of State, I worked with both parties to create a one-stop shop for Kentucky businesses to interact with multiple state agencies through one point of contact, reducing tape and making it easier for business to grow and create more jobs. There are currently 854 federal regulations affected small businesses. Uh, we need to reduce this regulatory burden, right? They always say small businesses, but really it's the big fucking corporations they give a shit about. They want to target burdensome federal regulations on Kentucky's energy sector. Again, war on coal, war on coal. Only like less than 1% is coal, are coal miners, so I don't know why. I mean, it's also like tobacco farmers, too. There's there, We have all this uh, sort of, or in horse farms, we have like this sort of nostalgia for the Annabelle and days when the majority of us do not benefit from these industries. Most of us are not in the coal industry, so we don't make any fucking money. The coal companies don't do shit for us. The coal companies don't do anything. The only thing that they do is they charge way too much. Electric company for me. So you're going to talk about the war on coal. Coal's been declaring war on working class families since day one, since they've been in operation. So, you know, you want to talk about the war on coal? The coal companies declared war on our coal. They gave it, you know, kidnapped it, took it for themselves, and then then once they had it, they charged us for what they had found. So that's that's the war. On, that's such a stupid fucking bullshit, like rhetoric, fucking dumb. I mean, it's. I wish. Why is politics got to obfuscate the fucking issue instead of actually, you know, telling us directly what's going on? I hate how they do that, man. Um, so. Cutting spending, the federal deficit is out of control. Ms. McConnell's failed to address the nation's out of control spending. Uh, she believes, Allison Lundergan Grimes believes a path to balance in the budget is possible. Veterans, Washington has fallen short of honoring our commitment to the veterans. Our veterans should not struggle to find jobs or access care. Kentucky is home to over 350,000 veterans, the fourth largest in the nation. It's a disgrace that so many veterans across Kentucky have compensation claims pending. More than 10,000 in the Louisville 
VA backlog alone. I'm shocked that Mitch McConnell opposed plans to reduce this backlog and voted against veterans jobs legislation. This is wrong. I'm committed to serving Kentucky's 350,000 veterans and I will fight for the quality health care benefits and treatment they have earned. We must expand education and training opportunities for service members, veterans, um, you know, improve collaboration between the Department of Defense, Department of Veteran Affairs, ensuring veterans receive benefits and medical care they deserve in a timely manner. Exactly. Veterans do need to get fucking paid. There's homeless veterans. One out of four is homeless veterans. 44% of the homeless are working jobs. So you got all these veterans who are working but homeless have no fucking place to go. Meanwhile, we spend, you know, a fucking trillion dollars on a goddamn plane or a fucking rocket. We keep on building fucking nuclear weapons. We can only bomb the fucking world, you know, a goddamn thousand times over. We need to, you know, bomb it another fucking thousand times over, right? So we just keep building all this new technology. We're enriching uranium. We have chemical weapons. We have stockpiles of chemical weapons all throughout the United States. we got lots of fucking nukes. And, um, and we have 150... Uh, um, uh, 900 military bases in 150 different countries. We're a goddamn empire. We're all over the fucking place. So take care of the veterans. Of course, you fight for a war. You should be able to fucking you know be uh, protected and shit. But it's not going. It's not trickling down the way it should be. Uh, you have the Halliburton and the Dick Cheney's and all them motherfuckers who make a shit ton of fucking money for providing services for the war through Halliburton, Carlisle Group. Um, uh, but the, uh, the overall point of what I'm saying is, yes, take that money in the military industrial complex and give it to our veterans. For every dollar we spend on a bomb is a dollar of a piece of bread or a book that could have been educating a child. For every dollar we spend to blow people up, we're taking a dollar away to help people. Let's start investing our money in our hopes and our dreams and not where our fears are. Why are we so petrified that we have to be spending some more military you know, money than the entire world combined? We're going to overstretch ourselves. That's what the Roman Empire did. They overstretched themselves. The Roman Empire, actually, when they would take over a country, they would declare the people in that country their citizens. We don't even do that. We'll take it over and say, no, you're a colony, you're less than, uh, you're not even a citizen. But they would at least try to co-opt them by saying, hey, you could be one of us. You could become an American, right? So... Alright, that was, I wanted to be fair with Allison Lonergan Grimes, so that was what I got off the, the her campaign website. I sort of sipped it through all of it. She still talks like a, a goddamn fucking politician, a reluctant politician who doesn't, she's not forthright with her information, she's not putting it out there. And um, and so I have a lot of issues with Allison Lonergan Grimes. Nobody's criticizing her because she's the fucking, you know, she has no power, but she is the new, um, the new face. I think she's basically got it. I think she's already won the goddamn fucking Senate race. And um, but we need to pull her to the left. We need to make her a progressive. If she's going to get in there with, by being a blank slate, not promising us shit, then she won't actually, you know, help us out with what it is we want. So what do we want? What do we want? Okay. Well, when we compare Gregory um, Gregory Brent Lichty's plan, right? So you got Lichty's plan and you got Grimes's plan. When you look at Lichty's plan, he's hitting on all cylinders with every major issue being discussed in America right now. So he is hitting every major issue. Um, whereas Lassen Lundergan Grimes is talking like a reluctant conservative political reclusive Dino. She is sitting there just being all, well, I believe this, this, and she doesn't answer questions right. And I know they got to play this stupid fucking game, but I hate the game because when they play in the game, I know that they're fucking lying to me. I have to back off a little bit with that. Rand Paul is able to bullshit Kentuckians, and that's how he got into office, so he probably thinks that his bullshit fucking half-assery is like the way you should do it. No, the Kentucky people don't really want to know that Rand Paul is in favor of legalizing crack, and, he, and Rand Paul points out the war on women with Bill Clinton, but what about Aqua Buddha? Rand Paul, there was a woman that said that Rand Paul, uh, you know, like beat her up or tied her up and then took it to the creek and then says, bow down to my Aqua Buddha, right? Because to uh, Rand Paul, it was God. Now he's like criticizing fucking the war on drugs, saying how dangerous marijuana is. He's sucking Mitch McConnell's dick. It's incredible, okay? But... Um, so, I, I don't know. I want her to speak honestly. This is me. I'm a Kentucky and I'm a voter. So, for me, I want her to speak about the issues as clearly and as bluntly as possible. I want to get all the information that she has about, you know, what where she wants this country to go, what she's going to do, what kind of senator she will be when she's in office. We, okay, so, um... 
when you think about all the problems that Kentucky has, we're like number one when it comes to child abuse and uh, pollution and prisons and mental health disease and obesity and health problems and cancer. So um, the Chris Qu uh, Bridges or Chris uh, Hedges quote that I think of, I think it kind of characterizes the society, the nation that we live in. This is for America, but it applies very aptly for Kentucky.